I'm the um, China correspondent at The Australian. I've been a journalist for a little more than 20 years. I've been in journalism and communications for also around 20 years in five countries. What's the biggest challenge that you have faced during this pandemic? But my wife is back here in Australia. We'd never spent more than two weeks apart, so it was horrific. My show was cancelled and I was then unemployed. I did both jobs for a while, and that was really, really intense. I think. We've all lost something of our former lives. Yeah, if this doesn't bring us together, what will? What would you tell future journalists who might go through the next pandemic? We have a responsibility to the world to tell the stories as they're happening. Don't lose sight of the big picture. That finger pointing solves the problems. The pandemic has taken a toll on nearly every human being and every sector in almost every country. To find out how it has disrupted and also transformed our life and work, today I have invited three media and communication professionals from all over the world to join our online discussion. Do any of you remember wearing your first mask? Yeah, my first mask was, um, I was doing a a Mandarin course in Beijing and um, I moved to Beijing January 3, 2020 and then that day of my Mandarin class like half the city had masks and was, my wife and I were feeling a bit weird that we didn't and my yeah my Mandarin teacher told us look she was so lovely she, she got my wife and I two of her masks from her supplies and gave them to us so that we could go to the chemist and buy more. No, I don't remember my first mask, but I remember just always wearing one. Did you ever stockpile toilet paper? No. <laughs> no? No. Three no's? Um, well, I ran out of toilet paper and I had to buy toilet paper on Amazon and it only came in industrial rolls that were like made for a public bathroom. <laughs> so the roll was like this. And it came in a box, I want to say like 24 or 48. I didn't intend on stockpiling toilet paper, but I could only get it at Amazon. And what's so funny, it lasted until about three weeks ago. Unintentional stockpiling. I take that one. Yes. <laughs> it, it, it did become a thing. Um, toilet paper, the prices rose, they doubled, they tripled, and you know, it, it was it was just quite a surreal experience, you know, in, in an already surreal country. Could you name a good habit and a bad one that you have picked up during the pandemic? Okay, the bad one obviously is, is like not fully dressing up, right? Like none of us can pan down at the moment. No, yeah. no. There's a, a commercial, an American commercial um, for a women's clothing store and the woman is dancing around her kitchen and, you know, she drinks it, she has a glass of wine and she goes like this and she's like, here's to wearing real pants. <laughs> oh, actually, uh, the sales of pants and that's what I read from probably Time magazine. Pants and bras go down and <laughs> sales of pajamas go really up. Not surprising, I guess. Yeah. Mm -mm. Any good habits? I have to say that I really would, I've, I've really taken this time to reconnect with my family and to spend time with them. And, you know, I think the dynamic in our household is, is much happier or not even happier because we were happy before, but it's just more simpatico. You know, everybody is cheerful. If you can believe it, like we haven't killed each other yet. <laughs> Have you been to any funeral during this pandemic? Uh, yes, one. But it was not COVID related. A family friend was 90 years old and, and passed away. But the funeral was very different. It was, it was only about 20 minutes and it was outside and that was it. Actually, Rahul, one of your Facebook posts really got me, and with your permission, I'd like to read it here. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. sure. You wrote, How bad is the situation in India? So bad that I'm actually relieved that my dad passed away years ago. His last years were spent fighting bone marrow cancer, so COVID would have been too much to take. 
At least my father had a proper funeral. Too many of my friends have lost parents who suffer indignity, even in death. Do you mind sharing a bit more about your thoughts behind this post? Yeah, so this I wrote、um, after the Delta variant, you know, just devastated the country,、yeah. and、uh, we found ourselves completely caught off guard、um, back in India. While my family was fine, luckily,、um, I know too many friends who had lost, you know, parents, and、um, many of them, yes, perhaps with comorbidities, but they perhaps still had you know, a good five, ten, fifteen years life,、uh, which was kind of. Snuffed away by by COVID. What's the biggest challenge that you have faced during this pandemic?、Uh, well, my、um, so I, I moved to Beijing with my wife after three fun weeks in Beijing, loving the city, loving our Mandarin intensive Mandarin classes.、Um, this thing suddenly got very serious and、uh, totally freaked out. And、uh, my wife went back to Australia、uh, at the end of January. Uh, but I stayed on in China because I just started as, you know, the correspondent for the paper there. Yeah, we'd、uh, never spent more than two weeks apart, so it was horrific, personally. How about Monica?、Um, well, my husband is a dentist and has his own practice. So, because of COVID, all of the offices were closed. So his business was closed for about thirteen weeks. And that was a huge economic hardship. And then, right after that, the show I was a reporter for was canceled. So my show was canceled, and I was then unemployed. That was really difficult because not only was there the economic component, but as a professional, you look back on your career of 20 years and you say, "Okay, well, is, is this the end of the line?" Because that was really challenging, really challenging. One thing I think journalists are good at is really thinking on their feet and kind of rising to the occasion in this very digitally demanding era. So I had to pivot to this job in public affairs, and、uh, I did both jobs for a while, and that was really really intense. I... Have there been any pleasant surprises to come out of this pandemic for you guys? I'm surprised at how how, how well Zoom works sometimes because it does feel like a Like, you know, quite a stimulating conversation across across time zones.、Um, you know, I'm 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 surprised at how technology did provide solutions. You know, when we needed them the most. But I'm surprised how fast the international scientific community, the vaccine specialists, got vaccines approved, like vaccines that work approved. So, yeah, hats off to the international scientific community. And I'm surprised by, I'm surprised and seriously impressed.、Um, By that, and I, you know, I take a lot of optimism from that. How far has humanity come from the Spanish flu? You know, one hundred years on, we're killing it. I mean, you know, there's been a lot of bad news, and I understand at an individual level, bad. But as a human, as humankind, wow, I, not A plus, but you know, A minus. You said that so beautifully. That is one hundred and fifty percent correct. I, I mean. It's really when you have humankind and we're put up against pressure, you really see what, as a species, we're we're capable of. How has your perception about freedom and everything else changed? For me, I think my thinking is in like three different buckets. So there's freedom, there is the science, and then there is the international solidarity. So I definitely now feel. How much we took for granted the open borders between countries. Today, we've killed it in terms of the scientific community rising to the challenge.、Um, but then, how do we then, as journalists, convince people that oh, vaccines are a good thing and you must take them, even in places where you don't have too many cases? Our only chance is if more countries are willing to work together in a in a spirit of kind of solidarity and openness. But very sadly, let's be honest, right? It's 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 going further and further apart. And and that's the challenge,、uh, convincing mankind almost that we look we're in the same boat.、Um, mm-hmm. Our best chance is to is to collaborate. But、uh, I, I really hope this happens. How do you think this pandemic has transformed journalism? I know I feel more passionately about my calling, because journalism is a calling. I believe 
and um, I, it was always a sacred trust. I felt between a journalist and the viewer or the reader or the listener or, you know, whomever. Um, but I feel that more now than I have ever in my life. And I think it's made me double down my commitment to the truth. I, I want to venture to say that it's made the job easier in some fronts in that um, it's, it's more getting, you know, interviews when you're in different parts of the world has become more easy, but it's made it more difficult in that because of so many pseudo journalists and so much misinformation. So you're up against a bigger foe, which has as much reach as you sometimes even more. It's, it's, it's really tough when people trust bad sources or are not able to kind of, yeah, spot mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, this is dubious and the, the choice should be obvious to some people, but it's obviously not as much. Too many people believe in conspiracy theories, so. If you could live through this pandemic again, what would you do differently as a journalist? Be careful. Because if you are not careful, who is going to tell the story? You know, you have, don't get sick. Take care of yourself. Be very, be very cautious because we have a responsibility to the world to tell the stories as they're happening. And if we're not there to do it, not a lot of people are. And they're gonna hear the wrong information. Gentlemen? Uh, look, I'd, I'd say, uh, you know, really pay attention to the to the beginning of it, right? That's the most exciting bit. Uh, so I, I would I would try and tell journalists to kind of look at the bigger picture from the beginning. I think in the beginning of this pandemic, there was a lot of finger pointing about, you know, origins and, uh, and conspiracy theories and tempers flare of the nation. What, what can we learn as a species from this pandemic? I think it's a fact that we need to live in harmony with nature and the more we encroach upon their territories, the more um, we, we, we are at risk of this thing repeating. I have written editorials saying that it's not a matter of if, but when the next pandemic strikes. And because of globalization and increasingly mobile populations, it would spread like wildfire. And here we are, you know, our worst nightmare come true. So I would tell journalists, just really, while you cover the day to day, don't lose sight of the big picture because it really helps put things in perspective without that finger pointing, which frankly solves no problems and does not help us reach a solution where we can kind of exit the pandemic wiser and better prepared for the next one. Thank you all so much for joining me today and take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Great to meet you all, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.